starts, which they'll be up and down all the time during the course of was a very busy lap, very physical lap for the drivers here, Ken. Yeah, they have some work to do, don't they? I remember Tiff Chittenden when she was the British champion in DD2 saying, you know, there's some tracks where you can get away with no gear changing because the torque in uh, the upper, the higher gear, the second gear, is such that you can kick off there and really just maintain it on a fast track. Well, one glance at the nature of this track with the uphill hairpins, the downhill hairpins, the long straights on the flat, the long straights on the down inclination, I think judicious use and liberal use of the uh, pedal is going to be the order of the day, or the paddle, I should say. So let's have a look at the grid then, shall we, for this one as I go out on the uh, out lap. On pole position is going to be 602, Sean Babington, alongside number 605, Zenderua, starts second with his new ART Grand Prix team that he's joined this season. Oriol Damo Caballero is the highest placed Spanish driver on the grid. Third, he starts in kart 639. Fourth on the grid, Andres Batman, 611. On the third row of the grid, starting fifth, Lorenzo Van Riet and Joshua Collins. On row four, we've got Michael Christensen and Alex Beggy. On row five, Sanad Al-Wahawi and Henry Heastope. Row six, Luca Kamali and Sasha Pio Haider. On row seven, Marcel Schirmer and Morten Nom. Row eight, Maxi Fleischmann and Cristobal Garcia Ramos. Then on row nine, we've got our highest place Masters driver. The Masters drivers within this class are the drivers aged 32 and above, who race for their own uh, separate trophy. And Florent Lambert is uh, the fastest of those drivers uh, from qualifying yesterday. Actually, Guillaume Berteau set the fastest time in qualifying, but was later penalised for having been slightly underweight, with the slightly different weight limits that we have this year. He just got caught out by that, so it promoted Flo to the fastest Masters driver and effectively pole there. 17th on the grid overall. Former British and world champion Martin Pierce is alongside him on the ninth row of the grid. On row 10, we've got Rui Carnero and Miko Line. Row 11, Zuban Estegia Esteberos and Louis Bordrand on row number 12, Nadir Kabaj and Christoph Adams, former Euro champion. Row 13, Maxim Shaboshnikov and Frank Rosell. Row 14 is Anthony Bass and Harold Garkaklis. And the final row, row 15, we've got Alexis Corso and Guillaume Berto, who of course uh, Ken put to the back of the grid and uh, with a bit more work to do now. And he wasn't entirely happy with the way the cars had been working anyway. He had set the fastest time. Uh, as I said, but wasn't uh, as high up the overall order as he would have liked and uh, more to come, he felt. So they're coming round ready for the start of this first race of the weekend. It's going to be a nine lap race, this. And you'll see Sean Birmingham. They're going to go round again. Well, it's a bit, yes, because the tail end of the field are still making their way through the penultimate corner. So they're being sent back around again. And uh, they'll have to do another 1,600 metres or so before they can start the race, Ken. So they're, they're just a bit spread out there. And uh, the start line official, Thomas Leiner, figured that out pretty quickly. That it wasn't going to be a good enough start, didn't he? Yes, uh, very, very experienced official, Thomas Leiner. And I think that was probably fair. It's a little bit unfortunate for the likes of Sean Babington and Cassandra Rua with uh, having brought the, really brought the nine-tenths of the field round at a good pace. Just picking up on the, your reading of the grid and Guillaume Berteau starting last, he's on row 15. Floral Lombert is the uh, furthest forward of the Masters, he's on row nine. So in effect, Guillaume Berteau's first task is to pick off drivers in the first six rows, isn't it? 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, and nine, and that in theory would put him to where Flora Lomba is, but of course Flo and Martin Pierce joining him on row nine, gonna be uh, trying to charge through some of the lower order of the DD2 Opens. It'd be quite interesting to see Guillaume Berteau, who had much improved form last year, I thought. He's, uh, well, he's a master, he's no youngster, but I thought that Guillaume Berteau at international level had one of his best years ever and I was most impressed, probably a lot better now than his brother Mark, although Mark also raced with him and uh, at times there was little between them. Just see on the screen there, the car is running through the hairpin at turn 12, which has a long, fast run, a, a long straight downhill and then a fast flat out kink leading into it. Hard on the brakes there. That's going to be a corner where we see some uh, overtaking, I reckon, during the course of the race. But they're coming back round now, ready for the start. There you can see the picture from the start gantry. And they're going to be sent round again. Another full start, I'm afraid. So almost there. They're a bit better bunched up that time. But they were still a bit too spread out and they're... Uh, 
Accelerating too early, we've been told, is the reason. It did look like that, didn't it? Thanks very much, Jill. So, yeah, the reason coming across for the restart, the ex cart's accelerating too early. And just to explain that, Ken, uh, they come out of the last corner. It's not a case of the leaders coming out of the last corner and being allowed to floor it straight away. There's an acceleration line, isn't there, which enables, in theory, the guys at the back end of the grid to make sure they're on the straight, at least, before the race gets up to speed. And also a safety feature. Yeah, absolutely right. So there's a line on the circuit. Uh, 25 metres, isn't it, before the start line. You might see it from the overhead gantry shot. It's a yellow strip, a yellow line going across the uh, tarmac, and they cannot accelerate away until they get across that, uh, that point. And they can't overtake, of course, until they get past the actual start line itself. So, uh, sent round again. Nigel Edwards, the clerk of the course, will be keeping a close eye on this one. And I want to make sure it happens this time. Didi Tier actually pretty good last year at getting the starts underway, weren't they? It was, uh, this is uh, very, very unusual. I mean, four uh, rolling laps, but only two aborted starts. But sometimes two aborted starts is all we'd get in DD2s over a weekend. That's right. Anyway, they are bunching up now. That's the run through that hairpin I was talking about. Just going into the left-hander at turn 13. Sean Bamington, Zenderua. These are going to be surely two of the big guns throughout the entire European Championship, the Euro Challenge this year. This is the first time we're going to see them head-to-head -head, and they're right at the front of the grid. Zinderua is in the red and white suit in the green colours. I have to get used to that now. Is Sean Babington and he is on the right side on pole position side and the race gets underway this time. The nine-lap race, it's a great start for Sean Babington. It's not such a good start for Zinderua. And uh, Oriol Damo Caballero makes a decent start. Zenderua is down to third place by the looks of it. Andreas Batman tucking into fourth. So the Spaniard gets up from the second row of the grid and splits the top two. They go to the top of the hill now, work their way out down through turn three into the right-hander at turn four and climbing up to the steepest part of the circuit now through this quick right-hander at turn five. And then they begin the descent then down into the next right-hand turn. It's a bit follow your leader through here. There's not too many overtaking opportunities. They go out through turn nine, then the left-hander onto the back straight. You'll see them coming towards us now. Sean Babington leading the way. Omar El Domo Caballero in second. Andreas Batman having a look at the inside there for third place to try and get that away from Zenderua. But Zen covered the line off and remains in third position for the time being. Batman remains in fourth place. Josh Collins has had a decent start to the race and he's there in fifth position going well so they get down now to this hairpin there's nobody having a look at anybody else inside the top six there are one or two moves further down the order just outside the top 10 but Ken at the end of the first lap perfect start to the weekend for Sean Babington yes I think it was aided a little bit by Zenderua's rather cautious start because Zenderua from the outside of the front row never tried to attack Sean Babington it was easy for the Spaniard Oriol Damal Caballero to go through into second place although as I speak now because Zenderua is putting pressure on the Spaniard. In fact, moments ago, Zenderua was coming under pressure from Andreas Backman as they approached the hairpin on the return home straight. And uh, Andreas looked as if he was going for a move that I think would have ended in tears and uh, judiciously decided to let it go. Zenderua's got a couple of lengths to make up on Oriol Dalmau Caballero. And I think that the Spaniard is just a shade slower than Sean Babington. I'll have a look at the screen in a moment. But the result of it is that Sean Babington has now built up six, seven, eight cart lengths. And uh, Zenderua bids to go second and go second towards the end of lap two. So Zenderua, after that cautious start, has now got in, in his sights Sean Babington. But Sean Babington is eight to ten lengths in front of the Belgian. But when it came, Chris, it was a nicely judged move by Cassenderu. Yeah, nice and tidy, wasn't it? And uh, as they go through now, Sean Babington's advantage at the end of that second lap is just over half a second, but I think it's already beginning to come down, isn't it? So it's this second group of carts to keep an eye on, second, third and fourth. And I think... Uh, Damo Caballero and Batman might do well to follow Zenderua for this lap and see if he can take them up towards the leader. He's just got this bit of a break at the moment. Down the hill he comes. It's incredibly quick on the way into this uh, hairpin turn nine. Such a steep run down into it. Babington continued to lead the way. Zenderua in second place. Damo Caballero hanging on to him in third. Batman at the tail of that group in fourth place then. In fifth and sixth we've got Joshua Collings and Alex Beggie having a tight battle. Those two running together trying to catch them up is Henry Easthope. Henry about three or four cart lengths behind them in seventh place. There's going to be a change for third position here as Andreas Batman dives at the inside of the hairpin and takes third position away. 
from Damo Caballero. So Batman the Swedish driver up to third. Now Damo Caballero, who made up time on the first lap, finds himself pushed back down to fourth place, but now he's gonna get a toe on the way into turn one. He has a look up the inside, but there's no way through. And Batman remains in third place. And all of that, Ken, has allowed Josh Collings to get a little bit closer in fifth place. Thought it was a little bit tame by Caballero. There was no real defense of that move against Andreas Backman. And although Andreas Backman had to dart tightly on the inside, it always looked like a move that he was able to effectively make. And I thought that Caballero might have been just a little bit more, well, shall we say, a little bit more positionally aware on the track. As it is, Backman has put one and a quarter lengths between himself, although Caballero there at the hairpin has closed up that to uh, just under a full length. And talking of closing up, Senderua is now, I would put that visually, at six cart lengths behind Sean Babington. The differential was half a second, 0.533. Those uh, front-running four are the only ones I've mentioned so far. Chris has mentioned the fast-closing Josh Collins in front of Alex Beggi. Alex Beggi, the Italian running six. We haven't seen a lot of him in the Rotax Euro Challenge or other RGMMC events, but going well in this one. And just looking in the Masters, Flo Lombard 13th, but the former Open champion, Mikko Line, in uh, second place in the Masters, in 14th place. Just saw a good move into turn one from uh, Anthony Abbas, who's uh, just moved himself uh, up a place, just outside the top six. So Anthony Abbas running pretty well in the top ten, having a, a good battle. I think he's just got himself up into ninth place now. Having a, been having a battle with Maxi Fleischmann and Michael Christensen for a while. Uh, meanwhile, a bit further down the order, but going well, making progress in the overall standings is Florent Lambert, number 646, with that distinctive bright yellow helmet. The uh, British-based French driver is in 12th place overall now and is two places ahead of the next best master, which is Miko Lyon, the Finnish driver, who is in 14th place and about a second and a half behind him. So Florent Lambert leading the master's class and uh, looking very comfortable and looking in good form here this week. And head down across the start-finish line for Zenderua as he pushes hard now. Fastest lap, uh, personal lap from Sean Babington, but Zenderua puts a PB in as well. Zenderua was... One and a half tenths quicker on that lap, Ken, and he's bringing the gap down as they go up through turn three and four now, up to the top of the hill. You'll see that the gap is right down. So it's the man in second place to watch here in the red and white suit, Zenderua, third in the Euro Challenge two years ago, fifth last year, but winning it right up until the death and a race winner uh, last year and on the podium several times. The ART Grand Prix team, who have got this unbelievable pedigree in uh, single-seater racing in the higher single-seater Formula, and then moving into Rotax Challenge Racing with Zenderua, and it's uh, gelling straight away, but it's also gelling straight away for Strawberry Racing and Sean Babington, who continue to lead. There they come then. No change, really, in the gaps between first and second. I think the start of the lap, Zenderua was quicker, but I reckon the middle of the lap, it looks like uh, Sean just having the, the slight advantage there and just pulling back away. Yeah, and whilst uh, Sean has just regained that minimal advantage, it did look to me as if Andreas Backman got a shade closer to Cassandra So whilst in one part of the circuit, and it's the part of the circuit we're on now, you would say Cassandra is closing fast and inevitably will take the lead. But that uh, final sector certainly went in favour of Sean Babington. There are three laps to go, including the one that they're on. There's something like about three and a quarter laps be uh, lengths between Sen uh, Sean Babington in the lead and Senderu a second. But much, much closer now is Andreas Backman. And Andreas Backman ever so momentarily just looked to see if a gap was there for a potential move. Well, the gap might have been, but he wasn't close enough to Senderu. But the Swede is now closing on the Belgium. And Backman gets very close and bids to go second and does go second. Andreas Backman now into second place. So the Tony Carts from Strawberry Racing are now one and two, with Sean Babington getting himself a nice cushion with two laps to go. And Zenderu has now got to fight back on Andreas Backman. So Sean Babington, without making a move, has increased his lead as Andreas Backman has gone past Zenderu. Good move, that wasn't it from Andreas, who's mixing it with the big boys here, with Sean Babington and Zenderua, who've got form at European level. Andreas had a pretty good year last year, finished 11th overall in the Euro Challenge, but wasn't able to consistently string the race performances together, particularly on a Saturday in the heats. 
when he'd gone well in qualifying, but he, he really did improve his race craft over the course of the season. And his high point last year was to get onto the podium in the British round of the Euro Challenge at the PFI circuit up in Lincolnshire, where he finished in third place. So he's second now, he's got past Zendera, but there's a gap now of around about three quarters of a second to the race leader, Sean Babington. So Sean Babington leads, Andres Batman second, Zendera a third, fourth is Oral, Domel Caballero, Josh Collins still fifth, Alex Beggi sixth, Henry Easthope is seventh, Marcel Schirmer eighth, Anthony Abbas ninth, Michael Christensen in tenth place, 11th Maxi Fleischmann, 12th is Harold Scar Catalyst, 13th and still the best master is Florent Lambert. Miko Line is second in the Masters, two places behind him. And Guillaume Barteau has gone well from 30th on the grid. He's up to 18th place now and up into third place in the Masters category. And we're on there to the final lap of the race as they come downhill now. And nobody really looking like they're in a position to make a move in that top four group just yet, Ken. Although Andreas Batman very quick under breaking into turn nine is one of the sharpest uh, breakers, isn't he, in this top running four. But Sean Babington, with uh, half a lap remaining, has got three full lengths, maybe four full lengths between himself and his teammate. And as you said moments ago, I don't see another attempted pass between these top four. Likewise, fifth and sixth are safe in the hands of Josh Collins and Alex Beggi. So the final rights of our opening race in the Rotax Winter Cup Onto the home straight for the ninth and final time. The victory goes to Sean Babington. Sean Babington wins it from his teammate Andreas Backman. Cassandra Rua, who had been second and battling for first, has to settle for third place in his opening rut drive. Oriel Dalmau Caballero never lower than fourth. Josh Collings came home fifth. Alex Beggi sixth. Henry Easthope, the former junior world champion, seventh. Anthony Abbas, his teammate, eighth. Michael Christensen of Denmark, ninth. And it was Marcel Schirmer of Germany who beat Maxi Fleischmann to that final top 10 place. Those two Germans, Marcel Schirmer and Maxi Fleischmann, in front of Harold Gokaklis, who was 12th. Well, Chris, uh, my view of that one was almost what might have been. I'm not taking anything away from Sean Babington, who I believe was an absolutely worthy winner, but had Cassandra got a sharper start and got a little bit more of an attack on Sean Babington at an earlier stage, maybe, maybe, maybe there would have been a different outcome. But of course, when Senderua only had Sean Babington in front of him, he wasn't able to hold off that lovely move by the fast and late breaking Andreas Backman. Good, good clean moves as well, weren't they? And uh, I suppose, you know, first heat of the day, they're not going to do anything too reckless, but uh, good clean moves, good driving from the four of them. The best battle in, in many ways in the last couple of laps was further back between Anthony Abbas and Michael Christensen, who had a real slog, overtook each other four or five times in that race. In the end, Anthony coming out on top. You can see the results on screen then. Sean Babington and Andreas Backman make it a one two for Strawberry Racing. Half a second, the difference in the end. Uh, Zenderua in third position for the ART Grand Prix team. Uh, and Oriel Damo Caballero, who made the excellent start to the race and ran second for a couple of laps, finishes fourth. Josh Collins couldn't quite get to that lead group, but uh, had a good solid race there in fifth place and was able to pull away in the end from the Italian Alex Beggi. Henry Easthope coming home in seventh, ahead of that great battle between Anthony Abbas and Michael Christensen, who were eighth and ninth. Marcel Schirmer uh, was the best of the German drivers in tenth place for Pro Train. Uh, Maxi Fleischmann, his countryman, just behind him in eleventh. Harold Garkaklis, twelfth. Luca Kamali, thirteenth. Florent Lambert uh, pretty uh, comfortably winning the Masters class there in 14th place overall. He lost a couple of positions overall during the last two or three laps, but uh, a very good result for Flo to uh, take Masters honours for Tatum Racing there in 14th overall. Lorenzo Van Riet was 15th. Miko Line, uh, the finish driver, was second in the Masters class and 16th overall. Cristobal Garcia Ramos coming 17th, and Guillaume Berto, a good drive from last on the grid from 30th to come home 18th and the third best of the Masters ahead of Frank Rizel. Uh, Alexi Corso completing the top 20. Zuban Estagia is the best in 21st. Christoph Adams, the uh, Euro Rotax Masters champion of two years ago, uh, who when we spoke to him yesterday on the grid, said he hasn't really done anything in terms of testing or racing over the winter, so it's his first time out and maybe slightly rusty, but still a decent result there. Uh, to come home as the fifth best master in 22nd position overall. Uh, Martin Pierce uh, dropped out of the race and see what happened to him, but Martin uh, dropped out and uh, after about a lap and finished 29th. And Rui Conero, uh, for some reason or another,
uh, that didn't start the race in the end. So Rui Carnero, uh, a real shame that uh, Moroccan was not able to start the race. There you can see.